So the same thing kind of always happens when a new phone is announced. The media gets the device ahead of time, maybe a couple days, a couple weeks if we're lucky, and we get to use it while we're preparing our review. Then the date and time of the press embargo arrives, the embargo lifts, everybody posts their review at once, and it is a giant, big frenzy of activity. There's commenters going nuts and defenders and attackers, and it's just a huge explosion for about a day. And then everything disappears. I mean, sure, there's follow-up coverage and stuff as people find bugs. People have other stuff to say about the devices. They, they wear them in over the course of a, of a day or so. But really, nobody ever goes back and revisits these devices after that initial blast of, of review to see how they feel after a couple weeks. So let's do something about it. Let's have a look at a device after a couple of weeks after release and when it's not shiny and new anymore. I'm Jaime Rivera with PocketNow.com. This is the iPhone 5. This is episode 8 of After the Buzz. I remember my first impression of the iPhone 5 after Apple announced it. I remember feeling that Apple had made a big mistake in not following other smartphone trends. Yes, it had a bigger screen, but a lot of the elements of the design just didn't seem good enough in comparison to other devices in the market. Now, I also remember how much of an eye-opener it was to actually hold the device for the first time. See, videos and photos really don't do this phone any justice. It's when you hold it and feel it that you understand the genius behind the design. The aluminum finish, the shiny chamfered edges and its lightweight all contribute to making this device aesthetically beautiful and also provide a great feel in the hand for one-handed usability. Now, reviewing an iPhone 5 after the buzz is difficult. The media is full of all types of complaints ranging from scuffgate, scratchgate, you name it. Now I've had my iPhone 5 since launch date. I have never used the case and it has no scratches, no scuffs or any signs of wear. I guess that like with any phone, it's designed to be used and not dropped. If dropping phones is common to you, well, buy a case. And if you're like many of us who simply don't drop our phones, I can confirm that after a month of normal usage, the device holds up well. Just take my word for it though and buy the white model. It retains the natural color of aluminum and therefore your possibilities of scratching it diminish. My only real complaint with the hardware is that even though the display has better color accuracy than previous models, it's not as sensitive. If this is your first iPhone, you won't notice a problem. If you come from any other device though, you'll notice that it's not as buttery smooth as its predecessors in terms of screen sensitivity. Software is a different story though. There's a mixed bag of good and bad. On the good side, iOS is simply unbeatable when it comes to apps. Even though the screen on the iPhone 5 is longer and some of the apps still have black bars, developers are porting them to the iPhone 5 rather quickly. Now, it's not just the number of apps, but their quality. Even when comparing them to certain Android counterparts, shows better quality and design in most cases of their iOS variants. Now that said, most application developers have not made substantial differences when upgrading their applications to the iPhone 5. All they did was stretch them, though that's not a big deal. Where the iPhone 5 has shined when compared to both its predecessors and even the hottest of competition is speed. The A6 processor is a real screamer. It handles everything that you throw at it with ease, and I have yet to experience lag in anything that I do with the device. The extra screen real estate is quite useful when it comes to games, but I'll admit that the device does heat up a bit when playing games and also using the device in cellular data. I guess my biggest complaint with iOS is that it's still iOS. You know, Steve Jobs said that the original iPhone had software that was at least five years ahead of its time. The problem is those five years ended with the old iPhone 4S. It's not that I'd prefer a laggy UI full of widgets, but Apple should at least figure out a way to animate the icons in order to avoid the need to jump from application to application every time. Overall though, after my satisfaction with the hardware and boredom with the UI, I'll admit that my experience with the device is quite positive. It's like a blend between futuristic design matched with a UI that we already know. The camera is also still one of the iPhone's features that's hard to beat. Great photos during the day, but what strikes me the most with the device is how well it takes photos during the night with the flash. It now matches my old Sony Cybershot in almost every case. At times when competing devices are already playing with optical image stabilization to match DSLR performance and not really getting it right, the iPhone 5 reaches its goal of being a good point and shoot substitute. The same goes for video where colors are accurate, and if you were to compare this resulting video to consumer camcorders, the iPhone's all you'll need. Battery life is a mixed bag. 
Ironically, I found the phone to perform better over LTE than on HSPA+. Either way, the device will get you through the day, but don't expect the second day on the same charge. Speaking of data, matching LTE and HSPA Plus on this device with the speed of the ASICS processor is a winning combo. Whether you're uploading photos or simply navigating on a website, there is no way to complain here. The device handles everything in a speedy manner. Another advantage I find in using an iPhone is the added benefit of being in the Apple ecosystem. iPads are currently the mainstream and most of the apps that you buy on the iPhone will give you an iPad version included. iCloud also makes the experience better. You buy an app, a song or a book on the phone and it syncs everywhere. You take a photo here and you see it there. Having a phone made by Apple and a tablet made by Apple provides added benefits that you won't get if you buy a Nexus 4 and a Nexus 7 for example. And then there are some little things. The speaker is one of the loudest on any smartphone and it doesn't distort, even at maximum volumes. FaceTime looks better now with a better front facing camera and a high resolution image. And finally, the iPhone feels much more like a phone when you hold it to your face now. The increase in height makes it feel more like a phone than ever before. So, bottom line, would I still recommend that you buy an iPhone 5 after a full month of usage? The answer is absolutely. The phone surely doesn't cater to the hacking and tweaking power users, there's Android for that, and my top pick there would be the Galaxy S3. But when it comes to the power users that need a tool with the best apps that serve their needs, this is the phone for you. The overall package will save you the need to buy a point and shoot, a camcorder and even a game console. Add to that the fact that you'll be carrying one of the most beautifully designed smartphones of the year, and it's really hard to lose. This has been Jaime Rivera with Pocketnow.com. Thanks for joining me in episode 8 of After the Buzz. Be sure to share your experiences with the iPhone 5 in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and thanks for watching.